and our text will be coming from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 15 through 17. And it reads as this. See then that you walk circumspectly. Circumspectly simply means cautiously, aware, not as fools, but as the wise. Verse 16 tells us, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. 17 tells us, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Our pastor taught us that we need to have a focus verse. And so the focus verse is 16, redeeming the time, because the days are indeed evil. Yeah, all right. We must redeem the time, making the most of this time that we have here on earth. One of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to make us believe that we have more time than we actually do. Please know this, time is a gift that is given to us by God, but yet our time is often lost or misspent when it is not being used according to God's design. That's right. There is a design for our lives given by God. I want to list three simple points this morning, and they are this. Number one, first, we must not squander our time mm -hmm. just simply going through the motions of everyday life not really establishing a relationship with God. We know we keep coming to church habitually, week after week after week, because that is what we've become accustomed to doing on Sundays. But do we really understand that in addition to just showing up, we must also surrender. We have to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. We have to let him chart our course. We can't do this thing called life all by ourselves. No. Truth be told, life can be hard sometimes. Yeah. And we really need the almighty hand of God just to survive. Yeah. But they say you gotta pray just to make it today. Yeah. That's real stuff. Yeah. We tend to call on the Lord. You know, sometimes when we get in trouble, you got that court date coming up. When you get scared, we call on them when we are lonely, relationship broken or severed. And many times we call on them when there's a death. You know, we, we, we're strategic when we want to call them. But the fact of the matter is that we have all been saved to serve the cause of Jesus Christ. Do you believe for a moment that God did not have a plan for your life when he created you? Think about that. Do you ever think that I'm just here by happenstance? Mm. Well, if you think that, you're not the only one. According to the scriptures, King David wondered the same thing. But it tells us in the book of Psalms, 8, 3 through 6, that when I consider the heavens, the works of thy hand, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is, man what is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visited to him, remembering that our God is a very present help in a time of trouble. It goes on to say, for he has made us just a little lower than the angels, and he has crowned us with glory and honor. Thou hast made him us to have that dominion over the works of our hands and put all things under his feet. Yeah. So yes, indeed, there was a plan for your life 
and a full mind. You don't have to take my word for it, but I can prove it. Travel with me to the book of Jeremiah. In the 29th chapter, verse 11, it reminds us. And it says this, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's deep. An expected end. So if you expect something, it could not be by chance. It could not be just out of the blue. God has an expected end for all of us. An expected end means just that. We are here by God's design. Traveling further in the book of Jeremiah, I got to look good to me. I went on down to chapter 31, verse 3, and it says that the Lord have appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. This, my friends, is a part of the master's plan for our lives. Our being here at this appointed time was planned. We came on the scene exactly when we were supposed to be here. There was a purpose in mind, and there's a job that each of us must do, and only you can do the job. There's some stuff that is assigned for your life, for your hand and yours alone. Don't abort the mission. It's going to get a little deep. I ain't going to be with you long, but I have to tell it to you like God told it to me. All right now. Okay? So then the question still remains. What time is it in your life? Well, I'm glad you asked. It is time. It is really time to get it right with Jesus. It is time to turn it over. Stop playing with God. Stop, start living as you was purposed to do. You know, we hear Christians sometimes say things like, for Christ I'll live, and for Christ I'll die. But if really put to the test, like some of our brothers and sisters in foreign lands, would you die for the cause? Think about that. I ask right now, would you give up your life to follow Christ? What would you say? Yes. What would you say? I need you to marinate on that. That's rhetorical. You ain't got to tell me. So think about it. Amen. In the earth, there are seasons. Amen. Yeah. There are seasons in our life. And we have winter, we have spring, we have summer, and we have fall. I love you so much, I'm going to beg you. Don't wait until the fall or the winter season of your life to accept Christ as your personal Savior. Do a self-examination, a spiritual examination. Look at the season that you are in. I went on forever with this thing. It got good to me because now I'm captivated by seasons and time. So I travel over to the book of Ecclesiastes. And Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 1. It tells us that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. So really, what time is it for you? You don't have the answer right now, but I surely want you to pray about it. I want to know, ain't he been good to you? By mere virtue of the fact that we are still here, I believe he's been good to all of us. That's right. Remember that time is a gift. I simply believe that it is time to stop taking God's grace for granted. For by the mercies of God, we have not been consumed. Think about it. 
if we had to pay, think about this, if we had to pay for the sins that we have committed against the will of God, how much do you think you know? My Lord. <laughs> I know I would never be able to pay. I'd have to file bankruptcy. If I considered all the times I disappointed God and there was a price assigned to that, I have to find a bankruptcy and borrow a little something from every one of y'all. Because the debt would be too big. The second point I want to share with you today is that I'd like to make mention concerning time. That time is truly an asset. It's a benefit but it is also slowly slipping away from us. This asset of time does not discriminate against the poor or the millionaire life. We'll take Robin Williams for it. With all the money that he had, and he had millions, he could not buy another minute to get it right with God. We can only pray that he knew Jesus as his personal savior. Because without that benefit, hell would be his resting place. This real stuff, y'all, I need you to hear it, understand it. So now once this asset of time is lost, it is impossible to regain. Can never, ever, ever get it back. Even yesterday, it's a beautiful day. I hung out with my prayer partners. We had a good time at the bridal shower. That was beautiful. Can't get that one back. It's gone. You know, think of another time that you like. Can't get any of that back. It is gone. So I considered, I've used me as, as an example. Have you ever thought, gee, how did I get to this age, this place? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly have. I am now 55 years old, double nipple, five old plus five. Oh my goodness. But I still remember 40 fondly. <laughs> but to be honest, I think that most of us can remember an age that we like better than this one. But the reality is that the days are going by quicker than we think. Quicker and quicker. Let me assure you that this aging process is not an easy thing. Yet it is inevitable. Inevitable. Gonna happen no matter what. And no man can escape the plot. Family, I beg you, because I love you with the love of Jesus Christ, to seize the moment. Seize the moment. All we have is now. Right now. That's it. What a sad outcome it would be to live your life all willy-nilly, any old kind of way, no track, no course, and end up in hell. Simply because you thought you had more time to come to Jesus. Just so you know, hell is a real place for real people who don't accept Jesus Christ as their Lord. I try not to watch too much of the news as depressing. It is really, really depressing. But what we all collectively know is that people are checking out abruptly every day. We are living in a time, sad time, when two baby girls aged three years old were taken out by violence. One child was playing on her porch and another was killed by her own father. These my friend, are perilous times. That's ugly. And these stories, you know, you can get different people in different locations, but the stories are pretty much the same. We are living in some perilous times. 
So the question I asked you is, what time is it? Did a little research. The word time appears 623 times in the King James Version of the Bible. So apparently, time is really important to the Lord. The significance of the biblical concept of time is unmistakable in the way it presents God at work in guiding the course of history according to his saving plan. It tells us that time began at creation and becomes the agency through which God continues to unveil his divine purpose. And there is a divine purpose for each of us. God went on and he established the cycle of days and seasons by which time is known. So let me tell you what time we're in now. It's time to stop worrying. Stop stressing and start praising God. We are some of the most stressed out people on the planet. How do I know this? My part-time job is as a mental health clinician at the Good Samaritan Hospital. I have to turn patients away. I, I can't sit them in my calendar. And they're coming to be young, old, of every ethnicity, male, female, stressed out. Life has stressed them out. And the common denominator is that they don't have an anchor. They don't have an anchor. It appears that we Christians are under major attack from the enemy. The book of Romans will tell us that even when I would do good, yeah. <laughs> evil is always present. Always. You know, you ever start out a course and you say, this week I promise you, I'm going to study my Bible a little bit longer. I'm going to make time for you, God. I'm going to get into a worship service. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to step up my game because I know I owe you. And something else always seems to get in the way. A phone call, somebody come by, you want to go to dinner, you want to go bowling, you want to go something else, go ahead, won't it? And the minute you purpose to put him first, something will come. It will tickle your ears, it will entice you. Because when I would do good, evil is always present. So in those times, you've got to make a conscious choice to put God first. But I challenge you. Be a good chair. But there is a solution. And it is to give God praise. Because I've learned that through my hard times, and I shared with a few folks that this summer has been completely rough for me. Just woo-woo. 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 Y'all know. My prayer partners know. My families know. I shared with my pastor. It's been terrible. July, August, and September. So I had to make a conscious decision to do something different. And to take myself, I know all of the mental health stuff, and so I had to practice what I preach. That's right. yeah. I had to change my position. I had to change my posture. And so I started to confuse the enemy. I know how. I started praising him like I was crazy. I started praising him here. And I praise God because I praise Him because I remember all of the other stuff He done brought me through. I challenge y'all to do the same thing because it's gonna get rough sometimes. But the same God that brought you through that one will bring you through this time. Praise Him. Give Him praise. Give Him thanks. And you know everybody's at different levels and their walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. So everybody ain't gonna have eloquent words to say, you don't have to. Yeah. If you can't say but one word, call him Jesus. Yeah. Jesus! Because in the name of Jesus, yeah. every knee shall yeah. bow and every tongue shall yeah. that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. And guess what? Here's the hit. You say Jesus loud enough, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. I challenge you, try it. I can only tell you what I've lived. I tried it and I know it to be true. So I had to go back. I said, same God. Same God. You heard me through some stuff. I ain't need to be 55 and didn't go through something. And I had to remember God. You carried me through that one and this one. And you gonna carry me through the next one. So in the meantime, I'm gonna give you time. Again, we have to redeem the time. Be conscious. Be aware. Because the days are indeed evil. Be not unwise. Understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. If you don't know what to do, pray about it. We've been in character here at Oak Street the last two months to increase our prayer life. The acronym is PUSH, P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. Do it again. Pray until something happens. So it might not happen for you right away, but don't give up. If you push toward him, he will he'll work it out. He will work it out. He will work it out. I didn't know how I would fare at the examiner's board. Because I tried that two years ago. And to be real honest with you, I got a little discouraged. Indeed, I did. But I know the God who carried me to this God who was with me in all of my rough times. So I had to remember right. to tap in to the one who he watches over Israel and I know that he has me in the hollow of his hand. You know I had to go back into the book of Matthew 6 and 33 and it talks about if you take care of the birds and the bees and the lilies of the field what less will you do for me? You have to go to work. I just have to go to work. But his word assured me. Tap in. Look to the hills. I looked, I prayed, and he answered. And he delivered. Amen. I'm standing here today because of prayers. The prayers of the righteous are better than much. Y'all pray for me. My family pray for me. My friends pray for me. Thank you. But most importantly, I knew God was on You know, time is priceless. Yes, it is. Especially for those of us who are striving to qualify to live with Jesus eternally. Yes. To the world, the term of redeeming the time could mean maybe driving 65 miles an hour into 35 miles zone. You know, you know, late for work. Redeeming time could mean skipping breakfast, saving a little time for yourself, or maybe some cosmetic stuff. You know what I mean? To look more youthful, trying to redeem time, on and on and on. But to those of us in God's army, it has a completely different meaning with significant consequences. To many of us, wasted time pursuing things of this world. We have neglected our relationship with God. Not making it a priority. Matthew 10, 33 tells us, if anyone denies me here on earth, then I will deny that person before my Father, which is in heaven. Redeem the time. What time you have left in your life. And the reality is this, that we only have today. Yesterday is history. 
Tomorrow is a mystery. So all we have is now. There's a song that says, Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. But just for my sake, help me to make it one day at a time. Because really, that's all we have. But with today, and I'm going to quickly come along here, I'm just about done. But with today, I can choose you. Make a choice that will last eternally. Remember, family, our days are numbered. Yeah. According to Psalm 90 and 10, it tells us that our days of our years are three, score, and ten. Yeah. For those who don't understand what a score is, score is 20 years. So God promised us three, score, and ten. That equals 70 years. But it also says, but if by reason of strength, they be four score years, that's 80. Teach us to number our days. Ain't that right? That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. Thank you, God. So if God only planned for us to have seven, and if by way of strength we get a little bit more, that's a gift. 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 Every day that you get is indeed a gift. Stop wasting the precious time called your life That's right. that God has given you. He gave it to you to do something with it for Him. For Him. Coming down here. Procrastination <laughs> is defined as the practice of carrying out less urgent tasks in preference to more urgent ones. Or doing the more pleasurable things of the world and thus putting off the impending task sometimes to the last minute, always before, just before the deadline. But I'm talking about procrastination. It causes us also to inhibit creativity and postpone potential accomplishments. These accomplishments that could lead to our spiritual growth. My final thought is, how many of us can say, I just saw so-and-so. I just talked with him last week. God knows I saw him in a month and a month ago. We was on the phone. And now they are gone. I implore you, I beg you. All we have is today. No, today. The, that's it. So with today, we have to seize the moment. And we have to do it now. Let's not give God what's left of our lives, but give him what is best of our lives. In conclusion, John 9, 4 states that I must work for the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night coming when no man can work. In other words, don't wait until old age or near death experiences before you start to live for the Lord. The time is much closer than you think. Time indeed is a precious gift that we simply cannot take for granted. The songwriter did it this way, and it says time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth a new can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hands. The difference between a goal and a dream is a timeline. Plan to give God your time, your tenth and your tenth. Give it to God. Give it to him now. I conclude with this. Are you tired of just being tired? Just out here, just living life, really not understanding your purpose. We were brought with a price. We owe the Lord. We owe him. I often say, oh, brother, it's our reasonable service to serve the Lord. 
because he cares for us. So I will challenge you, try Jesus, cast your care on him because he really cares for you. And I need you to marinate on this final thought. What time is it? 